Hey, Chris, Leisure Games. Very, very, very interesting last 24 hours, let me tell you. Um, man, this is going to be really interesting come next week. You guys got to you guys got to hear this. Let's talk about upcoming board games though. Let's talk about upcoming crowdfunding games because that's the reason you're tuning into this video. Let's talk about what's on the horizon for next week, where my thoughts are, where things ended from last week, and everything in between, including the game that you love not to play, the over under. Let's do this. Okay, so first up on the 17th, the biggest one of the week is Thunderstone Quest, Deepwood Defenders, and they've got spoilers here. You can look at some of the cards that they're going to be putting out, which are actually kind of cool. If you pull up like the May 10th one here, it's kind of a cool looking card. Uh, the ninth one is just like this bluebird, blue jay, so big contrast of difference. But this is going to be two new quest series uh, in the it sets, and again, if you're like me and you have Thunderstone Quest, it, you know, it looks like a great game. It is a great game, but when I think about it, the biggest barrier to this game is the overhead in terms of the introduction and the rules and the mechanics as a next level deck builder, which has a lot more depth and strategy to it as more of a dungeon crawl than just a true deck 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 builder. And again, this is something like 12 or 13th expansions, like not expansions, but like quest quests that are having a lot of content each in them. And it's sort of a Marvel legendary, but harder even than that to get to the table in terms of setup and teardown and some of those aspects. So it makes it difficult when I'm looking for a deck builder that I want to show off or I want to be able to play really easily. Um, Again, it's like with all the content, you're almost talking Gloomhaven size, and that's not insignificant, which means you can't travel with it, which means you're playing it at your house, and which means when you have all the other stuff to play, it's easier to get to the table, and it's smaller in size, and easier in portable. It's just difficult to do so, and I have most of the other expansions. I probably have three quarters of them, but I don't have all of them, because I think I skipped the last crowdfunding campaign because I ran into the same issue. Like, as cool as this looks, I just don't get it played. So if I can't get it played, what's the point? Now, you have almost 3,600 people or so, following it and the question just is what is the price point going to be and they say right here they're introducing a new starter set so what does that actually mean is it going to make it more streamlined is it going to give me more advantageous playability in that sense so i'm going to be following it i'm going to be watching it but i can't guarantee i'm even going to be backing it because of that same concern next up we have menunaki which is actually relaunching on the 16th again this was in the line of those recent games that funded but canceled because of the funding goals being too low and not reaching enough production. Now, interestingly, this one was a little bit different than some of the other ones because part of it, I feel like, was what they offered as well as what they didn't offer incentive for. I don't think they had enough people pledging at the actual production level of the game because Cranial Creations here offered, and we'll skip over the main crux of it and we'll come back to this in a second, but if you scroll all the way to the bottom here, they were offering a lot of promos, especially new promos for some of their other games that they have put out, including, but not limited to, Lorenzo, Newton, as well as Barrage, which are all very well-considered games. But you had a lot of people getting this, and you can see, like, new there, new there, new there, new there, new, 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 new. And you had a lot of people going for those instead of getting the actual game that they were bringing to crowdfunding in the first place. And this crowdfunding game that they're bringing in the first place was a very, very, very expensive 4X Euro style game, especially when you're going up against other 4X Euro style games that have gone out in the past year on crowdfunding, especially like Voidfall, the comparisons are inevitably going to be made. And especially when you have such a higher price point, complicated by all of the miniatures and plastic and value concerns, again, like not personally value concerns, but that is the way of the consumer nowadays in general, am I getting a good value? people weren't as pleased in that sense. And I wonder, I worry that, again, access to the pledge manager, a lot of people were doing this. Are they going to do sort of a CMON where they say, in order to get access to the pledge manager, you at least have to have a copy of the base game. I mean, CMON did that with their latest Marvel zombie side, right? If you're not familiar with that, they have basically said, like, let's say you wanted one of the Fantastic Four expansions because you wanted to paint the miniatures, and that's all you wanted. You can't get that because you can't get any of the add-ons unless you get the core base pledge for $130. Are you going to see something like this? Probably not, but it's at least a thought that I've had run through my head since it was announced that they're going to be relaunching. Now, if you go over to the latest update here, they tell a little bit more details about what's actually going to be on this relaunch. They're going to have a more of a true funding goal, but all the stretch goals are going to be unlocked if they reach that. As well as, look at this price point difference. This was the most striking thing to me when I was looking at this, doing this the first time through. Not so much in the base game, but look at these subsequent levels. This is over 100 euro difference right there. Is stuff being cut out? Are materials being changed? How can you all of a sudden cut 100 euros out of the price? 
and not have significant overhead concerns? I don't know. Or was it just we were going for super huge margins? I have no idea that side of things, but that's a huge difference. I mean, even this one, which is 31 euros, is really pretty big. So what's going to be different? And they don't really talk about that except for the fact that that's going to be included for the people in the EU and people not in the EU are going to have discounted shipping. So that's where they're going to make up the discrepancy. So you're going to be paying that, but you may pay less shipping then to balance it out. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the second time around? Are people going to be as responsive? Are people going to be turned on more by the changes? Or are they going to have a bad taste left in their mouth? I have no idea. This isn't a type of game for me, but I'm going to watch it because it's an interesting test of the market nowadays on the crowdfunding aspect. So there you go. The other big one of the week, uh, most likely based on what I can tell, is going to be Kingdoms of Acandia. Now, the Seven Realms. This is sort of a RPG open world-esque game, fantasy tropes extraordinaire, but having a destiny system having an upgrade system, having a cooperative nature that you are trying to fend off the darkness, right? If you go over to the page here, it lays it out. There are a couple of videos, including the One Stop Co-op Shop that has a 55 minute video in the video section to see what it actually entails. But I mean, this is the big question, right? When you're putting terms out there like this, a unique puzzle system, okay, what's unique about it? Special battle system, okay, what's special about it? You know, card and dice fighting, tower defense, destiny cards, much more. I mean, I worry about, again, being too complex for the sake of complexity. That's a lot of stuff to be able to manage. That's a big map that you're going to be looking at here when you blow it up. What are you going to be doing? How open world? How minutia are you diving in? Is it more like Aridia, where you're diving in and diving in and diving in layers upon layers upon layers? Or is it more overhead meta-esque? And it seems like it's got a little bit more overhead meta-esque but it's still trying to have everything else in between. So it's miniature based. I checked out the pre-launch page. I believe I put it in the link description below and on that it has a big miniature on it. So I imagine it's gonna be a triple digit price point and they've got about, I think about 3000 or so people following the page already at this point. So the question is gonna be, what is the actual price? How many expansions? What is the all in? What does it look like from that aspect? And how unique are some of these aspects? Because this is what we're seeing more of and how does it differentiate itself from the other ones that have already come out? Bigger names, bigger pedigrees, but also just, you know, why this over something else? So that's gonna be interesting when it launches on the 17th. Also launching on the 17th, we have Union Stockyards, which is a one to four player, two to four player, I'm trying to think of it. Uh, but it's a worker placement Euro style game, which I imagine will be some sort of deluxified version on crowdfunding. I believe it's from Solid Rock Games, where you are meat packers. You're one of five meat packers, five, five players. There you go, because there's five meat packers. You are basically trying to um, slaughter the most animals and they're trying to make it historically accurate, they said. So they're using over six rounds or six years, as they're calling them, uh, events and circumstances that are going to affect the situations that you run into in each round to differentiate themselves and to force you to adapt your strategy to what is being presented to you. You're going to be slaughtering. You're going to be uh, fighting off laborers. You're going to have to be dealing with strikes. You're going to have to have resources. You're going to have to upgrade your lines and your equipment. And so that's the sort of aspect they're going for here. I have no clue if people are going to like this theme or not. Again, it's a heavy worker placement, or as the description says, I believe a midweight economic euro game so definitely not my ilk especially with the worker placement but i can see that people are going to potentially like that it's just whether or not the theme is going to appeal to them in a broad sense or not so we'll see when it launches on the 17th now, also launching on the 17th, we have Joystick Heroes, which is sort of the equivalent of a Millennium Blades only set in a 90s style arcade. I blew up the picture here so you can tell a little bit more. Little standees that you're going to be moving around through uh, various arcade games. And you have a total of, I believe, 10 tokens. And you're going to be spending them at these locations individually to see how well you can score in the game to see how many high scores you can beat, which is then going to give you a certain reward. After everyone has spent all of their 10 tokens, then you decide who has the most at the end in terms of victory points, and that person is declared the winner. So you can see the boards, you can see the upgrades, you can see where your stats are going to be sort of kept track of here in the terms of the bonuses. And I mean, we'll just kind of see how it actually, you know, plays when it comes out on the 17th. Also on the 17th, we have Arcadia Tenebra. And speaking of more of an open world game, this is a one to six player game, I believe, where it has more of a murder mystery deduction-esque RPG vibe, where you are trying to look for and stop a serial killer before the blood moon happens. And you're going to be venturing out through this map and trying to deduce clues and um, resources and everything else in between until you can stop him from doing what he's doing. I have no clue how this actually entails. I believe this is actually a relaunch and 
it's going to be interesting to see what it does differently this time around. There is a 15 minute how to play video on Board Game Geek if you want to check out more of a complete description of what some of these elements are and how they interact and what you're going to be doing on a turn by turn basis. But again, what is the price point going to be on something like this that is more card RPG-esque based? And is there heavy enough overlap with the RPG as the tabletop elements that people are going to be interested in from both sides? So we'll see when it launches. Now going back, speaking of relaunches, Sare is relaunching, I believe on the 19th, if I'm remembering this correctly. And this is, again, more of a resource management game where it the Egyptian theme is playing very heavy and you are trying to build your palace, your monument in... Egypt, I think Egypt, and um, you're going to be going through various phases, planning, production, and then construction of your various monuments. And now again, if you're looking at this and saying that kind of looks familiar with that big plastic, it gives me the Foundations of Rome's vibe in terms of these big plastic chunks, but I have no clue if it's going to be similar in terms of gameplay. There is no price point on this relaunch pre-launch page, and so to say that 10 times fast, I didn't actually mess that up in terms of doing the takes this time. You're going to be looking at these cards, looking at the actions, the effects, the resources that you can get, but also the trouble cards that you have to take in terms of dealing with your workers and um, whether or not you're going to produce resources. You come across these cards. These are the Horus cards. Again, how are you going to interact and use these? All of these seem to have different various ways to use them. And so that's really where the crux of the game is going to come in. It talks about the buildings and what the buildings do in terms of expanding your resource management. Again, all of these different types. And then they give you a little bit of what it's going to entail. Now, the uh, retail version is listed here, and the luxurious version is the version I was referring to up above with the lots of lots of building plastic. So how do you feel about that? Foundations of Rome just put it out there. Again, people were happy with that or seemed happy with it so far because it's a good game, but also the argument has been easily made that it didn't need to be half as much as it was and didn't need to have any of the plastic that it had either. So... How much of a big deal is that for you? How much on the deluxe side of things in a game like this do you fall or not fall? So it'll be interesting to see what the test of the market does a second time around with this game. So Sayu, I said over or under, I believe $20,000. And it matters because in this one, 29,000 29, is under. 29,559 is over when you go and Google it right there. Now, then we go back and we see what Assault on Doomrock did. And I said 200,000 euros over under. I said just over. 201.8. So, just over. Barely got that one right. So, one for two. Not too bad. Explorers of the Woodlands. I said over or under. And I got this one wrong because I said over or under 75,000 euros. Not US dollars. And 74,500 euros is definitely over 75,000 US dollars. So, missed that one. Wayfarers over under 450,000 and 608,000 New Zealand dollars is actually only about 379,000 US dollars. So at least I got that one right. Last up, I did Uprising. Well, let's go to the top here. Uprising, Curse of the Last Emperor. It raised $659,000. I said 750 under, got that one right. So three out of five ain't sh too shabby. Uh, again, what's going to be going on next week? Thunderstone. I'm putting Thunderstone at over or under 200,000 in the first week. We're also going to say over or under two and a half games. Two and a half games, because I think Akandia uh, has a chance to go over as well. So we'll put it at two and a half over or under breaking 100K in the first week. Again, I'm going to go under because I don't think anything else is, even if Akandia and Thunderstone Quest do. Then we'll do Kingdom Builder. Kingdom Builder, we'll say 100. 187,000, 187,000. I'm making that up because I think 190 is too high and 185 is too low. You know how my mind works. It doesn't work very well. Uh, again, I'm going to go under, but just slightly. And then last up, we're going to do Orion Burger Canal. And this is at 73,000 euros. I'm going to say 80,000 euros. Um, again, I'm going to say under. I don't think it's going to get that push in the last day and a half before this finishes uh, filming. And I think about the time this video airs is when this will end. So um, there you go. There's your over under. So, what's up for TV time? TV time, I am still watching Designated Survivor 60 Days, the Korean drama, but I found out, um, I, you know, I, I just haven't been watching a whole lot. There hasn't been a whole lot of interest. There's no new good shows that have really come out on any of the subscribing streaming services this month. I feel like, so I've just had to go back and search through the stuff that I've had saved and never really watched or never was in the mood for or just felt put off by. And so I've started watching, actually, it's a Chinese drama. It's on Netflix. It's called King's Avatar. Basically, uh, an, an MMORPG-esque League of Legends-esque game is out there and everyone plays it. 
and this player who's basically at the top of the mountain gets forced off his team, and it's just his experiences and play after that, and what happens with that, and it's a little cheesy at times, but it's, it's actually a little bit interesting, too. I'm actually relatively engaged by it, and I'm really wanting to see what happens next, so that's been very positive. Otherwise, I think there were just one or two other small things here and there that I was just picking through and finished up with. Uh, Old Horses, the BBC show, uh, finished season one. It was only six episodes. Apparently, there's going to be a season two, though. They put a teaser of season two at the end of season one, so I wasn't expecting that, but that's cool because it was a really solid show. Um, solid, not amazing. I mean, there were definitely some, mm -hmm, but it was good. Wouldn't mind seeing a little more. And otherwise, I'm just, we're, we're watching, uh, oh, that's what I should talk about. We're watching Avatar The Last Airbender with my kids. And uh, the eight and six-year-old are totally all enthralled by it. And the interesting thing is my one and a half-year-old has never really fully engaged with any TV show. Like he'll watch, he'll watch soccer, football with, with us, but like his attention span, he'd rather go under, put our heads under the blanket and do that while we're watching with me instead of like actually watching it. But he gets real excited when I, when I shout goal or things like that. Other than that, um, the interesting aspect of this and why I'm talking about him in relation to this is he'll watch Avatar with us. He loves Momo, and I'm forgetting the flying bison's name as well, but he actually knows their names, and he says them. Like, Momo's the flying lemur monkey, and he's like, Momo! Momo! So, it's hilarious to be able to sit there and watch with all three kids, and have them be entertained, and have us talk about it, and it's it's a good show, and it's, it's good family watching, too. So, uh, that's what's going on there. Apart from that, uh, I have videos pretty much made up for most of the next week, so... Again, I mentioned that this was an interesting uh, last 24 hours. Um, I had an addenda to make on a video because of this 24 hours. So, whatever. I'm not working this weekend. I got to coach kids soccer and I'll remember to wear some sunscreen and a hat this time. So, that's all I got. That's all I got. And ramble over. Tune in. Subscribe up. Watch whatever you want to watch and play something this weekend. I got stuff that needs to get played. Maybe I'll get something played this weekend. I didn't really get much played last weekend, so. Stay classy. Have a great weekend. See you around. They put a teaser of season one at the end of season two.